This 27-year-old male patient suffered a paintball trauma on his left eye. The eye developed hematocornea and traumatic cataract and was treated conservatively with IOP reducing medication for 8 months. I performed two person teases at 10 and 2 o'clock. The next step is the injection of Vision Blue. The problem of this eye is that the interior chamber is very shallow due to pressure from behind. I therefore inject first Viscoelastics and then behind this the Viscoelastics Vision Blue. It is no problem to use Vision Blue with Viscoelastics. Remove the Vision Blue with BSS and add some Viscoelastics to inflate the interior chamber again and then start with the rexis. Important here is first to remove the posterior anechia, which you can see from uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, main incision at 9 o'clock, and now I will, using a push-pull instrument, try to remove the anterior synechia. Which is more difficult than expected. I realize now that a membrane is covering the anterior capsule. I'm not completely sure if I'm dealing with a membrane or the interior capsule. You can see the small flap at 10 o'clock. I'm therefore using a membrane spatula to be on the safe side and I'm trying to remove this membranous structure. Now from the other person teases the same maneuver. The interior chamber is again very shallow. I therefore switch to Helon GV which I can only highly recommend for shallow interior chambers. I use again the push-pull instrument to take away this membrane and realize that the membrane stretches from the pupil at 12 o'clock to the zonules at 6 o'clock. and there to 6 o'clock. And below the membrane I'm quite sure now is the interior capsule. So this must be a inflammatory membrane. I'm now using a intervitreal straight forceps to cut this membrane at the 5 o'clock position, 7 o'clock position, and uh, then I'm trying to 
perform a rexus with this push pull instrument again cutting some part of the membrane with the straight forceps and then using the capsorexus forceps I managed to remove this membraneous structure which stretches here to the um, pupil at 12 o'clock using the straight forceps this membrane can be completely removed and finally I can continue to work with the anterior capsule so until now I only removed a membrane structure located on the anterior capsule I therefore inject again vision blue because the membrane was covering the anterior capsule and therefore the dye did not reach the anterior capsule so another staining of the anterior capsule removal of the vision blue from the anterior chamber and uh, again inflating the anterior chamber with Helon GV a very useful instrument for shallow interior chambers now the iris can be easily pushed to the side with the push pull instrument and I can finally start the rexus with the sister tome I first pinch the interior capsule in the middle of the pupil and then try to make a flap and I do not succeed because of the scarring the white scarring below the interior capsule on the left side so I'm uh, going the other way around now using the capsorexis forceps I get a stop at the scarring I cut the scar with the capsule using the straight intervitreal scissors and then I continue with the rexus using the capsorexus forceps observe the white scar which I'm removing now which is stuck to the interior capsule some more viscoelastic to steepen the uh, tear chamber and continuation of uh, the rexus using the capsorexus forceps now it's flowing easier and I can perform a 
round capsular axis. The next step is hydrodissection. The nucleus is of course soft. The patient is only 27 years old. So FACO is not necessary. And uh, we can continue with irrigation and aspiration. If you look in the middle of the cornea, you will see a disturbing white area or spot in the middle of the cornea. This is a residual hematocornea. The cornea used to be completely white, like in the middle now. It is much, much less after eight months waiting. The next step is the implantation of an IOL. I'm using a regular one-piece IOL. I'm not sure if the haptics are really inside the bag. I therefore inflate the bag once more with Helon GV and uh, rotate the IOL to be sure that the haptics are inside the bag. You see quite nicely now the hematocornea in the middle of the pupil. I'm quite sure now that the haptics are inside the lens capsule. This maneuver is performed with a push-pull instrument. Removal of the scholastics. I'm now trying to inflate the interior chamber. But there's so much pressure from behind that I do not succeed. The same from the other person teases. I therefore inject again Helon GV to inflate the interior chamber. If you do not inject too much, you will not have an increased intraocular, intraocular pressure the next day. 
a very nice characteristic of this helon and then some air the pressure on the next day was 28 millimeter mercury